we shall today discuss firearms injuries caused by small firearms like handguns revolvers and pistols this will be followed by another module where we shall discuss injuries caused by firearms like rifles etc so far as these guns are concerned that is handguns they consist of revolvers and pistol in fact revolver is also a pistol called revolving pistol because there is a revolving cylinder it is called a revolving pistol otherwise both of them are used for defense of the person using them with one hand only that is why these are called handguns these are firing projectiles whose velocity is within the range of 200 to 400 meters per second this is considered as a low velocity and the range of firing of handguns is 75 meters as the effective range and 1000 meters as the dangerous zone or dangerous range of firing these weapons are slow firing projectiles therefore the injuries caused are less dangerous than those caused by high speed projectiles fired by rifles whose velocity is more than 800 meters per second depending upon the place of attack these guns may prove fatal also for example when there is a firing at the temple and there is a close range firing the brain and the skull gets fractured and the man gets disabled or meets a fatal injury these are this depends upon the nature of the place where such injuries are caused these injuries may be revolver injuries as well as pistol injuries are by and large alike and therefore they will be discussed simultaneously apart from other injuries caused by high speed rifles which may be sporting rifle or even service rifle etc the point that i want to stress is that the injuries caused on the front side of the body are more dangerous are more serious because of the skin being thinner on the front side of the body as compared with the back side the back side injuries are less dangerous comparatively because the skin is fairly thick and the injuries are less serious but the frontal injuries can be suicidal also whereas injuries at the back are indicative of a homicide case it cannot be suicidal because nobody will fire from back side of the body he will always try to fire from the temple or from the mouth and therefore to decide whether it is a case of accident or it is a case of a homicide it becomes very important as to what is the place where firing has taken place the firing is more serious depending upon the type of projectile the, a projectile having a circular or a, a cylindrical structure is less efficient to enter the skin but the injuries caused are more serious the reason being the more area of the bullet knows into play and thereby cause more serious injury the position of the projectile the diameter of the projectile the charge contained in the cartridge these are some of the factors which decide but we cannot decide anything regarding the shape of entry wound and exit wound as they depend largely on the 
many factors and these are not considered as one factor hence we cannot give a definite shape to this for example if there is a contact firing on the skull the skin may get overturned and it may look like a star shaped wound after studying this module you shall be able to know about the significance of handgun in wound ballistics various factors related to handgun inflicted injuries concept of handgun wound ballistics introduction there are two types of firearms which are in common use one is the smooth bore firearm and the second one is the rifled firearm smooth bore weapons have same diameter at any particular circumstance drawn on any point at the barrel whereas rifle weapons can have different diameters due to presence of lands and grooves there are very few rifles available with the common men in our country the numbers of country made guns are frequently appearing in crime since their availability is very large the rifles are weapons intended fire high velocity projectiles and are used in police work military operations as well as for the civil defense purposes the rifles have rifled barrels and fire cylindro conical projectiles called bullets rifle barrels improve both the aim and the range of bullets from them rifling enhances the effective range of the bullets tremendously the rifle firearms which are commonly used in crime can be divided into various categories as detailed service rifles handguns submachine guns machine guns a handgun was regarded as a compact weapon for self defense even though today there are handguns made especially for target competition or hunting most are still intended with defense in mind thus handguns are compact for concealability and simplicity of carrying this becomes a part of the legitimate definition of a handgun as they are considered concealable and therefore believed dangerous and are controlled by law in most countries of course a handgun should be proficient of firing a projectile perfectly at a target the energy delivered must be adequate to suppress any attack nevertheless be light enough so that the recoil generated does not pull the gun from the shooter's hand this is challenging in practice and there is no perfect choice so many types of handguns are manufactured for diverse circumstances lastly since no one can be guaranteed a perfect shot or a single attacker a handgun must fire multiple shots the two most common defensive handguns are the double action revolver and the semi automatic pistol development of firearms many significant changes have been made in rifles from time to time the manual system of loading has been replaced by semi automatic and auto attack action resulting in great increase of firing rate which may over 600 rounds per minute thus a person fired with multi shot injuries will have no chance of survival the increase in the capacity of the magazine has been increased and most of the service rifles use a magazine of about 20 to 30 rounds the shooter does get the greater fire power and so do the terrorists many other changes like reduction in the weight of assault rifles introduction of optical sights and use of night vision devices make rifle more useful firing weapon at any time the wounding phenomena to increase energy of the projectile the velocity would be a more useful factor as doubling velocity will increase energy four times whereas mass increase would be a simple multiplication factor as is clear from the formula that energy e of a projectile of mass m having velocity is represented by 
E is equal to half mv square. Thus, almost all service rifles of the world have adopted bullets with smaller calibers, lower weight and high velocity. The most successful weapon system of the world, AK-47, has given way to AK-47. The former uses 7.62 caliber and heavier bullet while the later is using 5.45 caliber and 39 mm long cartridge. The energy of the new generation of the bullet is more. The new cartridges have changed bullet composition by replacing lead core with steel lead combination. A hollow point tip ensures breaking and deformation of bullet to cause extensive wounding effect to the victim. Other have come with Skinner jacket and point which ensures the breaking, expansion of the bullet to cause extremely serious wounds to the victim. Jackets of the bullet have also been changed by replacing copper or copper alloys jacket to steel jacket to ensure proper penetration of the target. These changes have resulted in creating much more serious wound apart from improvement in correct aiming, better ranges and higher energy of projectiles. Differences in injuries caused by smooth bore and rifled firearms. Smooth bore shotgun injuries. Usually, shotgun pellets do not exit from the body, creating exit injury. Under exceptional conditions, the shotgun pellets may create exit injury, though usually they do not. Exceptions are as described contact wound, tangential wounds where some of the projectiles have a very short track through the body, thin part of the body such as the neck or extremities, wound caused by large caliber buckshot or rifle slugs. Pellets of the shotgun cartridge remain in the body as shown in the figure. Rifle firearm injuries. Apart from the fact that rifle firearm creates exit injuries usually, the entry wound invariably have an abrasion collar around the dirt collar as shown in the figure. The abrasion collar surrounds the dirt collar. The abraded collar is reddish at first but becomes reddish brown as it dries. Some contusion is present in a braided collar and as such it is also called contusion collar. These two features are proof of an entrance wound. Irregular and occasionally patterned abrasion collar is sometimes produced by coarse article of clothing scraping on the skin. Abrasion collar may be absent when the tissues are soft and yielding. Example, in the abdomen or buttocks. In addition to abrasion collar, there is often a slightly white circle of peeled keratin where the stratum conium of the skin is raised to form a slightly ragged edge around the entry wound. The abrasion collar is caused by the spin of the bullet and is seen around the bullet hole. The spin of the bullet is caused due to the presence of lands and grooves in the barrels. Since the barrel of shotgun is smooth and situations are different in the two cause cases, Hence, the entrance injury will be indicated by an abrasion collar in case of rifled injury. Velocity factor The velocities of the projectiles fired the shotguns are usually less than 400 meters per second. Being spherical in nature, they lose their velocity rapidly. The velocities of the projectile fired from rifle weapons are comparatively higher and can be extremely high in many rifles. This facilitates creation of an exit wound, unlike gunshot projectiles having lower velocities. Handgun injuries Rifle wounds can be caused by handguns like revolvers and pistols, as well as by shoulder guns like rifles and machine guns. There are three simple types of handgun, single shot, revolving and self-loading pistols. These weapons are without difficulty hidden but hard to aim precisely, especially in crime scenes. Injuries caused by handguns are discussed. The standard handgun commonly used are the pistols and revolvers. These handguns fires low velocity projectiles and muzzle velocity varies from 200 meter per second to 400 meter per second. Most frequently encountered handguns have calibers indicated 
9 mm to 0.38 inches, 7.65 mm or 0.32 inches, 6.35 mm or 0.25 inches. The handguns fired from the intended range may form through and through wounds, having an entrance exit wound, an exit wound and a tunnel. They do not cause explosive wounds, but damage can be extensive when the bullets, especially lead bullets, come against bone and fragment resulting spread of multiple sub-projectiles going in different directions and forming multiple exit wounds in some cases. The nature of injuries of revolvers and pistols does not vary substantially. Some of the important characteristics of contact wound formed by handguns are explained below. The muzzle impressions are created on the site if the weapon is pressed against the site at the time of firing. Soot is always present in contact handgun wounds with powder particles identified. The head injuries from the contact or near contact ranges generally tear the skin around the wound to give as shown star-shaped injuries. The dimensions of course vary. The 6.35 revolver may not tear the skin or form star-shaped injuries. On the other hand, an angular shot may tear the skin even from a distance. In star-shaped injuries, the surface from which the skin is separated is usually covered by the GSR particles. They can be observed on the under surface by lifting the torn skin. The two key variables in handgun ballistics are diameter of the bullet and volume of gunpowder in the cartridge case. The bullets have usually round nose which is less efficient for penetration. But once the projectile has entered into the body, which it does from all the intended ranges, the round nose is more efficient for causing greater tissue damage due to greater presenting area it offers to the target. Hence, greater transfer of the kinetic energy takes place with the round nose bullets. Lead bullets may not create any exit hold. Since shape and nature of entrance wound and exit injuries depend upon a large number of factors, no definite shape can be attributed to an exit wound or an entry wound. Most of the ejecta enter into the body along with the bullet. The GSR particles are found on the flesh along the bullet track. The skin or flesh around the injuries gives cherry red appearance due to deposition of carbon monoxide. Contact wounds are formed mostly in cases of suicides only. Powder ranges injuries. The powder range injuries are from the ranges up to which GSR particles are deposited on the target that is less than 1 meter. The density of GSR deposits is a function of the range and various characteristics of powder. Therefore, only actual test firing can indicate range from which a given injury has been caused. The density of the powder deposit goes on decreasing on the increasing range and the penetration power of GSR decreases. Hence, they may be prevented by clothes or hair to reach the skin. Likewise, they will not ordinarily be found in the track. Distant Shot Injuries no star-shaped injuries are generally found, neither the GSR deposit found in or around the injuries, which are less severe than those from the close-range shooting. Summary Near-contact wounds with handguns generally occur at ranges less than 10 mm. There is some variation depending on caliber, ammunition and barrel length. Infrequently, contact wounds of the torso covering the sternum caused by handguns firing high-velocity pistol ammunition and may produce extremely large circular wounds of entrance with ragged margins. Contact wounds of the head with handguns, while often creating secondary skull fractures, do not normally produce the considerable injuries as seen in high-velocity rifles and shotguns. Substantial injuries from contact handgun wound of the head when they do occur are related with magnum calibers, example, the 0.357 magnum, the 0.44 magnum or high velocity high energy cartridge loadings of medium caliber weapons, example, 38 special plus P plus cartridges.
Contact wounds of the abdomen and chest from handguns ordinarily do not produce striking injuries of the internal viscera due to gas. With handguns, ball powder can readily perforate one and even two layers of cloth to produce tattooing of the underlying skin. Rarely, ball powder will perforate three layers.